Hey guys, I just want to show you a project that I've got going on here. Uh, I just moved into a new house and um, I'm actually going to be redoing some of the wiring in this electrical closet in the basement here. Um, from the house that I came from to this house here, I, I can't believe the contrast in the, the wiring and the electrical uh, work that's been done here. Uh, it's just poorly done, um, disorganized, chaotic, there's no wire management whatsoever. Um, the, the wires in this data panel here, they're almost overflowing onto the ground. Um, again, no cable management whatsoever. It's just um, messy and disorganized. This alarm panel, I, <laughs> like, words can't even describe how messy it is in there. Um, you know, it, sure, it works, but uh, it's, just, it's just not pretty to look at. Um, in uh, in this, this data panel over here, it's almost undersized for the amount of uh, components that have to fit in there. So I'll be upgrading that for sure to a larger panel. Um, and the main breaker panel here, you know, I'm sure there's been three or four guys working in there running wires wherever they have to. We've had a basement renovation um, done. And these three wires up here, they feed the pool circuits undersized, so I have to upgrade those. I'm going to be tidying up all the wires uh, in this panel here for sure. Um, in this alarm panel, I definitely want to be uh, organizing that, tidying up these wires here. Um, and uh, fixing things up. There's also um, this extra panel here for the alarm. I'm going to be consolidating the, the, the circuit boxes, the circuit panels. Um, there's a relay over here for the sauna. That's a sauna over there and there's a relay switch over here. So I'm going to be uh, making these nice and neat. Um, just generally tidying things up. It's just really, really messy. Um, I want to bring everything down in conduit so it's nice and organized. Get rid of these extra wires hanging down here. There's a couple of components that aren't even used anymore. Um, so I'm going to be getting rid of those, um, and uh, and I'll show you what it comes, what it turns out is. Uh, I'll probably be taking some pictures throughout, and uh, I'll show them as like a little slideshow as I go through, and uh, and then I'll show you a video for the final result, and uh, I'll let you know how it turns out. Okay, so the first part of the project's finished. Um, I got the, the main electrical panel rewired. Uh, everything is now a lot more organized. Uh, everything is nice and straight now. Uh, the wires are coming in neatly into the panel. Um, I had to drill some new holes in the top there to bring the new wires in. I've upgraded the wires on the, the left there. Those two yellow ones, well actually three yellow ones. Um, they're now the proper wire sizes. Um, but otherwise everything is now nice and straight coming into the panel. It's organized. Uh, it's logical. There's this extra wire here, the 100 amp service uh, wire for the workshop. I have to put that in. I'll tie that in later into the panel. Um, but I mean, in terms of uh, inside the panel, you can see how all the wires now are nice and straight and organized. Um, it's almost too straight, but you know what? It, it's nice to, to have that uh, when everything is organized inside the panel. Uh, nice to look at. Um, I have the, uh, the proper wire connectors here now, the L16s uh, clamping the wires into the panel. Um, easy to take out, easy to change, easy to move. Mm -hmm. You can see here, in terms of the uh, the gutters, the gutter space, you know, it's getting relatively full on the top here. That's because all the wires come in uh, on that side there, but still relatively organized, so it's easy to work with. Oh, down on the bottom here, no, there's no wires coming in on this side, so it looks pretty empty. Um, but again, still all the wires are in organized. I have the, the morettes there just to join or to, to lengthen the wires, um, just to get around to the other side. But yeah, everything is nice and straight here. Uh, you can see I start with the, the low breakers, the low singles on the left here, single 15s, single 15s, and single 20s. I get higher and higher as I go to the right, double 30s, double 40s, double 100. Uh, and on this side, I have a uh, the, the four breakers, the 15 double pole 20 and 15s, that's for the pool. Uh, all Everything that is, is there for the pool. Um, and then the surge protector on the bottom left there as well. Um, I like to keep those close to the to the top. And otherwise, everything is nicely ordered here, getting progressively larger to the right. Yeah, so that's the uh, the first part of the project. There, everything is nice and organized. Off to a good start for so far. Now I got to work on the bottom part here. I'm probably gonna take off all this these old two by fours and these old panels here and mount a nice new board there. So that's the next step. Okay, so on to the next part of the project here. Um, I have an increasing number of tools that are coming into the room to that I'm working with here. Um, but what I've done right now is I've ripped out all those old wires. They're all just hanging there right now. Uh, there's the new data panel on the left that I'm going to be putting in. Those two uh, alarm panels as well. Um, more tools on the shelves over here. Lots of stuff. Um, but I've had to keep the phone line active uh, for the project. So there's that lone blue wire that you see uh, across the screen. That's uh, still hooked into the phone in, in the kitchen there. That's going up into the kitchen. 
I've actually mounted this new piece of plywood here, uh, and that's what I'm going to be mounting all the new uh, panels on. So it's a lot more space now to mount. Uh, I still have the uh, the relay panel here for the sauna. That's still got to go on as well. I've snipped the wire there. Um, I've installed the new 100 amp feeder into the uh, into the panel here as well. Tied that in. So there's a lot more space now to mount things. Okay, so these pictures are basically just the same thing that you saw in the video. Uh, I just want to show you that rewired electrical panel here. It's just the pictures again, but um, basically everything that you saw in the video is the same here, just the, the picture version. I just want to point out those morettes here in the gutter of the electrical panel. That's just to lengthen the wires that are coming in from the top there. So when I added them coming in from the top, I didn't have enough length to get around all the way down the side here and into these breakers. So I just added the morettes there and, um, and brought them into these bottom breakers here. So that's why I have them there. There's two up here as well. Um, and then once I had finished that ele the electrical panel, I removed all the components down here. I removed this half wall over here, and I actually also cut this bottom portion of the uh, this uh, plywood panel off as well. I just remove uh, remove these holes over here, and so I could have a fresh, uh, a nice new piece of the uh, the plywood there. Now, what they had behind the panel, there was two two by sixes in the back over here, one over there, one over here. So I just extended those two by sixes down. I basically just added another two by six there, another two by six there, and I screwed on the uh, the plywood panel onto that. And there's those wires all hanging down like a spider web. There's that box over there. These are the ground wires coming in. And there's a nice new sheet of plywood for uh, for mounting all the all the other boxes. So the first thing I wanted to do was mount the data panel. This is that new Levitin panel that I'm, that I'm going to be mounting. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do inside of it was to have some kind of means for me to attach all of my, my circuit boards. Now, I didn't want to use, I guess Levitin has like some kind of proprietary method for attaching circuit boards into here. I didn't want to use that because I didn't like the spacing that I was able to get there. I guess they'd be like really, really spaced far apart. And I wanted to have everything nice and close to um, together. So what I did, I actually added a piece of plywood inside of this panel. So I cut out a board here and made sure it fit. And I'm just marking the holes on the back there. Well, this is what I'm going to use to screw the piece of wood onto the panel. So there's the, the first hole there and I have four holes on the bottom. One, two, three, and four over here. And there's one row down there, one row there, and one row there. So I have 12 screws in total. It's probably overkill but uh, it's not going to fall off. And uh, so I'm, these are the these are, I guess these are the uh, the threaded screws that I'm going to be using here. I chose a drill just a uh, a little bit oversized, just so that uh, there'd be a little bit of flexibility. Since there's 12 holes that I'm or I guess 12 screws that I'm using to to hold it, I wanted the, the holes to be just a little bit oversized, so I had some leeway when I when I put the board onto the uh, onto the screws there. You'll see in a second. Um, so I just uh, have a pilot drill there through the hole, and I'm going up to size. And there's the 12 screws that I have, um, four in the bottom, four in the middle, four on the top. So they're coming through from the back, and I just used a nut to attach it. I added a second nut there just as a standoff, so I get a little bit of extra height on the board uh, just to, to elevate it off the, off the I guess, the, the bottom surface here. What that's going to do is that if I have a screw that's going through the, the plywood, I'm not going to have as uh, high of a chance of bottoming out on, this, on, the, on the metal panel back here. So I don't need to always snip the tips off the screws there. All right, and there's the mounted panel. Um, I used, I think, eight, eight mounting screws there. And there's the screw over there. Once the panel was mounted, I was able to put the plywood backing in. And it fit pretty good, pretty exact. And then what I did was I uh, put a washer on and I put a nut over top. And tighten it down. And there you go. And what I want to do is I just want to cut off that excess here. There's the um, the excess length of the of the screw part or the the, uh, the threaded rod part. So I just cut that off with a wheel there. And it leaves a little bit of a mess down on the bottom, but nothing that a, a shop vac can't can't fix. So that's the uh, the finished product there. The next thing I want to do is to bring some power into this box. So I brought, um, I guess Levitin has a, has a they, they give you provision for attaching an electrical box there. Um, I brought the power in from the uh, from the back here. There's like this little plastic grommet that I use. I, I drilled the hole through the electrical box here, put a plastic grommet in through here, 
and that um, allowed me to bring the, um, the, the wire through. Um, this is the plastic grommet on the inside there. And of course I had to ground the box. This is where the wire comes out. It's coming in through here. Um, this bank of boxes, these are the bank, these are the boxes that I'm using as my, uh, I guess, alarm transformers over here. The doorbell transformer is going to be all in here. So this is where my, I guess, main electrical panel plug is coming out of. It's not just going to be a plug though. There's going to be, I guess it's coming in from the panel here. There's going to be a feed through first into the data panel. Data panel's here. So it's coming from the panel. It's going to come through here. It's going to feed through this box into here first. This is going to be the first back into here. This is where the, the plug is going to be and then to the transformer, to the transformer, to the transformer. So it's going to jump through that way. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have a, a GFI in this plug over here. I, I don't really know why I did that. It's just <laughs> maybe just because I had an extra one lying around um, just to have some kind of circuit protection there in case there's like a damp basement or something like that just to protect all the um, the electrical components there. Um, just beside here I have a whole house surge protector, squared E, and that's coming up into here. And you can see these are the two lines that are uh, coming out of the surge protector and then there's the uh, the neutral line going into the back there. And just wiring up this bank here. The ground wire is intact. So there's the finished bank of uh, plugs here and transformers. So the, this again, this is the uh, just the standard wall plug there. I guess it's a requirement to have a, a plug off of a electrical panel for service technicians, that kind of stuff, if they have to plug something into. And then these are the two uh, alarm panel transformers and the doorbell transformer. So next what I did is I brought my two wires that I'm going to be using for the alarm panels here. These are the, uh, I guess this is 18-2. And another 18-2 wire here as well, just different color. That's for the alarm and for the doorbell. So I brought those in underneath the boxes there, or underneath the transformers, and attached them in. So I did a little spiral there. It's almost like a uh, like a stress relief. Uh, not really necessary here, but it's just more of like a looks looks good kind of thing, right? Um, it's just an, a nice way to bring the, the wire up into the box there, and. Uh, and you know, if ever the wire gets kind of pulled from the back, well, at least there's a little bit of um, spring or coil that that has um, there's a little bit of relief there. So the wire gets pulled from the back here, and that that coil kind of opens up, and it doesn't pull as hard on these terminals here. The next thing I did was to mount the um, the relay panel for the sauna. Now, this was the initial uh, wiring that was done in here. I guess the electricians or probably not electricians, I don't know, whoever wired this, they they used a speaker wire over here. You can see these two leads coming off. So I took this before I um, started disconnecting the box here just to make sure I knew how to put it back. And they used speaker wire here to, to hook up into the, um, onto the, the relay box. And you can see the, the 14.2 coming off here and there's a white on that terminal there. But I couldn't really believe that when I saw that. So that was definitely getting changed. Let's see here, yeah, there's the black and the white with the speaker wires going on, so not really the right thing to do. Anyways, I changed that. You can see now we have the white and the black 14.2 with a proper uh, crimped termination end on there. So that's a little bit better. Seems to be more up to code. And that's the newly rewired uh, relay panel. And I just put that right at the bottom right of the, uh, the panel because I don't really need to have access to that. So this is the uh, the next step here. I've got the alarm panel uh, mounted. I, I guess there's been a lot done since uh, that last photo. Got the alarm panel mounted, the secondary alarm panel mounted. I got some conduits um, installed as well, and the wires all fished in. And these are the new pipes here, just to bring the, the wires down. Just kept, kept them nicely tucked off to the side there all in their own little raceway, I guess. I just stubbed the pipes up into the uh, the top plate there, that two by four, and uh, it just gives me a way to attach the, that, uh, the conduit up into the, uh, into the wall. And this is where they come down. So this bottom one is where all the, the room feeds come in, 
Um, and this top one is this is actually the uh, the conduit. I haven't finished it yet. It's going to be the um, the feed from the outside. And you can see I'm just almost a little bit short on these wires here, so I don't have too much wire length to uh, to terminate my wires there. But I think it turned out to be just enough, fortunately. So I want to work on the alarm panel first. I started getting this all wired up just to get that out of the way. I brought the wires just to, to leave a little bit of extra wiring in there. I brought them around this side to, to terminate onto this upper board here. And that's the first board all tied in. There's that second one finished. And you can just see the, the wire labels that I have here. So data link number 19, number 15, and these little tick marks here where I have to cut the insulation to make the, um, the terminations nice and e even. And there's that third board all finished. Again, the wire is coming in nice and straight onto the uh, the panel there. And these are just the extra, I guess, auxiliary powers for the uh, like motion sensors, that kind of stuff. So you can see, yeah, all the uh, the wire labels here, 15, 17, 16, or 10 down there. So at least you know, if you have to like get to a wire or something like that afterwards, you can just uh, go off that wire label, and uh, you know exactly where that wire is supposed to be going. So there's the finished alarm panel. The next thing I had to do was to uh, mount the sprinkler control. So I drilled a couple of holes before uh, mounting it. This is that 188, the, the control wire here is going out to the uh, the zones. It's the, I have six sprinkler zones. Uh, so I used 188. I don't think I had 186. So I guess it, I would have needed to have 187 for a neutral, but uh, so 188 was the the logical choice there. So you can see there's those two holes. That's where I'm going to bring the 188 through in this one, or maybe this one, I forget. Yeah, that right hole there. And the power's coming in on this side over here. And then this is the control wire for the um, the, the wireless uh, rain detector. So the 188 is coming in through here and coming onto the six uh, zone control valves. And there's your neutral over here. The sensor attaches onto this side here and your AC power over there. I guess the battery also connects under the AC power ports. And that's that uh, the rain sensor there. So this is the outside portion of the rain sensor. And in the top over here, uh, I guess there's like a little, uh, some kind of little piston or whatever. And in this area, there's these little paper discs or some kind of uh, some kind of paper discs or you know there's like organic matter in the, in those and as it rains those discs will get wet and they'll start to expand and what they're going to do is they're actually going to start to uh, depress this little plunger in and that plunger goes all the way down into here and there's like a little uh, button there's a circuit panel in here there's a little button on that circuit panel as soon as that plunger gets depressed onto that circuit panel that's what causes the signal to get sent uh, through this this antenna, this, this transmitter antenna, and it gets detected by here. And when it t detects the signal from outside, the rain sensor goes on, and then that's what causes the signal to to go down to the uh, the valve control over here, and it says just hold hold the program for the day. So neat setup, and it uh, it works well. I think I have the the uh, sprinkler con or sorry the uh, the rain sensor mounted on the second story uh, roof, and this is in the basement basically, so it's got a pretty good range on it. It's the same side of the house, it's basically directly outside, but two stories up, or well, two and a half stories, because this is this is in the basement here, so uh, it does have a very good range on it. So that's uh, this portion all kind of completed on the left side there. There's your sprinkler control. And there's a little uh, cover for the uh, the the sensor. Okay, the next thing I had to do was get the door ready for the data panel. This is going back onto the, the Leviton data panel. Um, I wanted to mount a couple of components on the door as well. So that namely I was going to mount the um, the tele doorbell link. There I have the uh, the modem as well, and then I have a network switch. So those three components I wanted to mount here. Same thing I wanted to do, I wanted to mount a piece of plywood on here so I could mount those components. I couldn't really attach it just onto the bare metal door. so. Uh, the next thing I had to do was to get another sheet of plywood and uh, mount it, mount that sheet of plywood on the door. So um, there's a 
piece of cardboard that came with the door. So I'm using that as a template here. So I'm just drawing out the outline of the door and I'm going to transfer that to a sheet of plywood, just marking out, you can see here, um, just to allow for the, uh, the key lock area and the latch. And I'm giving myself about a, a half, maybe three quarters inches of tolerance here. So I'm just coming in about three quarters of an inch just to allow for um, you know the, the components to close uh, with with enough space on the door there. So that's the uh, the laid out template there. So I'm going to cut that out, and this is now what I'm going to be using to lay out on my uh, on my plywood. Just making sure that it fits there first. And that looks like pretty good clearance. The door can swing open. So clamp that onto my piece of wood and I'm just gonna transfer that over. And I'm gonna use a jigsaw here just to cut that out. And there's the cut piece of wood. And now I'm gonna put that on, make sure it all fits. And again, it looks pretty good. Good clearance around the, uh, the, the latch. So these stars are where I have space in between my components. You can see this is the, the D-Link network, network switch up here. This is the Teledoor bell link down here. There's a space in between there. That's where I can put one of my mounting bolts there. So you can see I have a plus up there, plus up here, a couple of those those pluses, just to show where I can um, where I can mount some some hardware for uh, like a, a bolt or a screw. And again, I've mounted or I've put little uh, tick marks down down here as well to show where there's a clearance. So I had a choice. Um, I could either glue the piece of wood on onto the onto the door um, using a flat screw there. So I would just put some glue under here and attach it onto the door, or I could drill a hole through the door and use a, a round head screw here and just attach it that way. I wanted to keep the design a little bit more clean. So I opted for the uh, the flush mount. I just uh, decided to glue the panel on instead. So um, we're using this, and this I'm gonna have my my uh, pilot bit here, and then my oversized drill. So again, just going through with the uh, the pre-drilling, and then I'll oversize those holes, making sure that the uh, the threaded screw fits. And there's a screw. So I opted to go for more than less uh, screws here just because since I'm gluing it on I wanted to have more surface area to, to glue onto the door if I just went with a uh, like a if I wanted to attach it through the door I probably would have gone with maybe like two up here two in the middle and two on the bottom um, right through the door but I have uh, how many do I have here eight uh, so I have again 12 uh, 12 screws here to attach it because I'm gluing it on so what I did was I have a standoff here again and I'm going to attach those through and bolt that on the other side and just making sure it all fits again there, centering it up. And I'm going to cut that off again just to make sure it's all flush. So there's the uh, the board ready to be glued onto the door panel. And here I have some LePage gel epoxy. So it's like a quick set, I guess a five minute epoxy here. And it says Bonds Metal Wood Fiberglass Oh, sorry, bonds, metal, wood, glass, fiberglass, concrete, ceramic tiles, and plastics, and more. Excellent for vertical surfaces. So we have a vertical surface here. I figured it should be should be pretty good for it. it. Sets in five minutes at room temperature. So I roughened up the screws here, the screw heads, just to increase the surface area even more. And mixed it up. And I put some weights on it just to make sure the uh, the screws would all get pressed into the uh, into the door. So I let that set for, I just waited about an hour just to make sure, and while that was setting, I, uh, well, you can see this, the, the glue there just around it. So while that was setting, I figured I may as well start mounting some of these uh, circuit boards. So I'm using these rubber washers here, and what I did was I just put a rubber, uh, rubber washer on either side of the, uh, of the board there. That way, that way it's just going to cushion it on either side as I screw it in. So you can see here, I did have to snip the tip here. This is a number four screw, a number four Robertson screw. Uh, the only length I could get, I think, was about three quarters of an inch. So that was definitely a little bit too long. So I had to snip the tip there. Otherwise, it would have bottomed out on the uh, on the, the metal panel. So that's why it's snipped there. Just a different view there. So I started mounting these. I've drawn a line over here where I'm going to mount them across. So these are the two telephone distribution boards here on the left. 
And then I have just some standard, uh, I guess, six port jacks over here and more over here. So the boards here on the left, this is a telephone distribution port. I have, uh, I guess I have two rows where I'll have available ports for telephone. On the right over here, I'm going to have ports available for Ethernet. So these ports are going to hook, on, hook in directly to my uh, network switch, basically. And then these middle jacks here, these are all where the room terminations are going to come in. So all the all these blue wires coming in from the from the rooms, or I guess going out to the rooms, they're going to terminate onto here. So once I had those boards mounted, I went back to check on the the glue job, the the gluing job there, and lo and behold, it didn't didn't bond. So it, it just lifted right off. So I took a look at this again. It said, uh, you know, it bonds metal, wood, fiberglass, concrete, ceramics, you know, and tile, and, and even more. Um, so I went back to here. It says it should bond to metal, but then I realized, well, there's actually a powder coat surface on the metal. So I figured, you know what, that might be interfering with the uh, with the surface there. So what I did was I unscrewed all the hardware and went back, and you can see now I have the open holes here. I went back and I marked those holes through onto the door there. And you can see where it is there. So what I did was I just went and ground away some of that, um, the powder coat, just to expose the bare metal. And I did that in all 12 spots. Just made sure I had enough uh, of the powder coat removed there to completely surround the screw. So all 12 spots are now um, exposed. And I went back and re-glued it again. And waited for another hour. So I have uh, have some more time to start wiring here now. So I brought some of these wires down onto, so I guess I'm starting on the the room drops here first. All the wires are coming down into here, onto these uh, these center boards. So you can see on the left here, I'm coming down onto this side. So what I did was, uh, as I brought the wire down, I just put a little notch where I had to cut it. This is um, the, uh, I guess, the, the jack for one port here another port and the third port here and then there's so so three on this side and three on this side and they serve the six jacks here in total so once I had it cut I lined all the wires up into their respective channels and you can see I've maintained the twists right down until they separate into there you can see the orange is still they still have the twists the green still has their twists coming down the brown it's hidden by the uh, the green and the orange there but they, the the brown also maintains the twists right down to here and then I was able to punch down the wires. Uh, so the orange side is the cut side, blue side is the safe side. So I want to cut on the right here, this excess wire here. So as I punch down, it'll cut, it'll snip it on this side, and it leaves a nice clean uh, installation. So I did the same thing for the other two over here, and that channel is now complete. So that's all set to go. And I'm just going to wait with the cables. The cables are still hanging up over there. And I have some wires all set to go for, the, I guess there's there's one for the modem over here, one for the Teledor, I guess two, sorry, two for the Teledorbell link in and out. And these are the network switch uh, ports that are hooked up onto this right board over, or onto these, these two right boards over here. And again, I have to have that feed through for the kitchen, uh, the kitchen phone line over there just to make sure the, the phone is still going while I'm doing this. Um, so sure enough, the, uh, the metal ex or the exposed metal, uh, did the trick. It bonded to the metal quite well. I couldn't even rip it off by, <laughs> I, I put a lot of force on it just to make sure I couldn't even rip it off. Uh, it held pretty well and I got the, the door pan, the door panel mounted there. So lesson learned, the epoxy does not bond to, uh, to powder coat. Uh, so there's the three components mounted there and it's holding pretty well. There's the door over there. Uh, so this this uh, com this board over here, this is the the network switch, the 16 port network switch from D-Link. This is the modem from Bell uh, Telephone. I guess it's a two wire modem, and this is the Teledor Bell Link unit over here. And I just have a uh, like a little loop of wire here. This is almost like a relief for. When I open the door, it has to kind of swing out this way a little bit, so I couldn't have the wires come right across here, otherwise they'd get all bound up in here, or there wouldn't be enough slack to, to bring them over here, which is why I have this, this U-shape coming down over here. And there's the wires coming across over here. 
this main area here, I'll be going over this probably in the last video just to show you what I did up there. I'll trace out the uh, the wires there. But that's all completed. You can see I just have the phone line kind of temporarily strung in here for now. That's going to get replaced later on. And this is the completed uh, network side of the, uh, the terminations. So basically from that, what I can do is I can just... Um, depending on what uh, room jack I want to have, if I want to have a phone jack or, or a data jack in a particular room, I can bring a wire from this side into here or so for, for, for Ethernet or for telephone, I can bring it from this side into here. And so I can basically choose whichever, whichever I want in that particular room jack. Uh, so that's pretty well the data portion all hooked up there. I, again, I just coiled up the cables inside the box for now, just... Uh, I think this was the end of the summer, so the next summer I started to do the cables. Uh, the first thing I had to do was, yeah, so you can see the cables just kind of strung out over here. When I came back the next summer, I had to uh, start by finishing up this conduit over here. So this conduit actually has to go all the way to the, uh, the incoming service on the other side. So I completed it over here, and this is where the incoming service is for the electro electrical panel. So I brought, I brought that outside uh, at the same location, and there I am drilling a nice big hole in the house. And this is the box that I mounted on the side of the house, and this is where all the incoming lines um, come in before they go back into the house. So you can see that this is the main electrical panel box over here, and the telephone company has their distribution box, and the cable company has their distribution box here as well. So together, lines from here, they come across over here into here, and the telephone lines come right down inside, they go right down into the house. The line from the cable company comes into here, and then it goes in depth, sorry, uh, into here and down in, into the house. So that's how that works. Let me show you a little video of this. So here's the main uh, demarcation points to the house. Um, we have the, the first thing is the, the electrical meter over here. That's the 200 amp service coming in. Uh, so it comes in up on the right there, that two inch pipe. Uh, and then down into the house there on, on the uh, the left there with that with the LB. Um, the next thing we have here, I guess, what the what the telco and cable companies do, they just stub up their wires with these uh, these two conduits over here. They just attach it right onto the incoming service, and then they attach their um, their demarcation boxes here. I don't like that as much because you're going to get all the interference on the the low voltage wires there. I think they're shielded though, um, at least the. At least the uh, the cable is the. I'm not sure if the incoming telco line is shielded, so um, you know you could still get that potential interference if you have the wire strap and just like that. But you know that's how they did it, so I have to live with that. Um, anyway, so yeah, they come into their boxes there, and then what I've done is from their boxes I come into my box here that I've added, and this is just um, almost like a demarcation point before it goes into the house. What they what they had before is from their lines they just kind of drilled a hole underneath of underneath of here somewhere and they just kind of shoved the wire in through over here and um, from the inside it looked like there was a little bit of water damage there so I definitely wanted to remove that I resealed it up and uh, and I added my new box over here so this is my demarcation point that I've installed here this is a cable tech box here. And uh, at the time, about three or four years ago, uh, it looked pretty good. It was a pretty decent price. Not quite as sturdy as I would have liked it, though. Uh, there are newer boxes. I think Multilink has a pretty good box. Um, at least from the looks of it, I haven't actually installed one. Um, but it looks just a little bit more sturdy. This one, just a little bit flimsy on the hinges here. Still not, not too bad, but I um, could have used just a little bit more, uh, more like a sturdy material. Um, so what I have here is, I'm using this kind of like as an as a intermediary between the the uh, incoming telco demarcation points and the co and the uh, cable demarcation points here, using it kind of as like a feed through box um, before it goes into the house. So now everything, all the data lines coming in actually flow through here before going down into the house there. Um, so you can see here these two lines, this is a ground and the, the, uh, the telephone lines coming in and this black one, this is the cable line coming in. So let me just show you what I have inside here. Um, Actually, it just with regards to the box here, what I really like about this um, the the box is that there's a foam insert that goes just where all the all the uh, access ports are, and you can see these little these little bridges here. These are all um, small little channels for the for wires to come through. But there's actually a foam protector on the top, and it actually prevents dirt and debris and dust and even bugs from getting in. 
and you can see so this box has been installed for about three years um, and it's pretty clean inside uh, there's not too much dust or there's no bugs or anything inside um, even the spider webs and stuff like that none of that in here now even though I have a cutout over here and over here for the conduit this is actually just I had to make this myself um, just to allow the box to close with that conduit in there it, it's still quite clean even though uh, even though that those holes are in there so I'm pretty impressed about that um, yeah otherwise just the, the bottom hinge here could be a little bit more sturdy so I had to pop it back in there it kind of pops out every time I open and close it so it uh, could be a little bit sturdier but overall not too bad um, so what I'm saying here is, this is the, uh, the, the, the telephone line and the ground lines that come in. They just feed through the box and go right down into the house there. They terminate at the main panel, the main data panel there. Um, and those, the, six, the six lines that I have here, these are the six options, or I guess, sorry, three options that we have for um, incoming TV service. Now, we were kind of playing with the idea of maybe getting uh, satellite TV instead of the landline, and then we were thinking, well, maybe just keep the landline, the regular cable. Um, and then we even thought, well, maybe just get antenna service, but then they were changing to the digital signal. So we thought, well, you know what, just stick with what we have, just stick with the cable. So I said, you know what, if we end up do switching, I'm, I'd rather be ready um, and uh, kind of future-proof the system here. So what I have are four satellite lines coming in. There's a one, two, three, four. There's a cable line over here and an antenna line. So we have three options for incoming TV service, whichever we choose to use. And I've just labeled them with the, uh, the, the, the four colors here for the, um, the uh, satellite, and then black for the landline cable, and white for the antenna. And uh, that pretty much covers all of our bases. Now as you can see here, we're only using the, um, the cable currently. So we have the incoming cable line going right into the, the, um, the cable line, <laughs> and that goes into the house. Now we do have the option, if we decide to, to switch to a satellite service, well, all we have to do are just run wherever we put the satellite dish, run it down the house, run, run the wires down the house here and into these four um, into these four terminations and we have incoming satellite service. Don't have to do anything through the box downstairs. It's already uh, hooked up. Just have to switch the um, just have to switch the wires in the basement, but we don't have to install anything new. It's just, you know, hooking up the wires out here and switching them downstairs. I'll show you that a bit later. Um, or same with antenna. If we wanted to get an antenna as well, we just hook it up into that into that termination and away you go. Uh, and then they go down into the uh, VLB and into the house there. Now the important thing here is that um, I do have some duct seal in the back here, similar to this this goopy stuff over here, and it just protects the, um, or I guess it, it blocks any drafts, moisture, that kind of stuff from getting into the house. I don't have it here because there's, an, oh, I guess, an access through the LB here. I have it in the back of the LB in in there. And finally what I did is I seal it up nicely right around the, um, the access point there. That way there's no chance of water getting in or, or leaking into the house. And of course I have my uh, labeled each termination point here. Satellite 1, 2, 3, 4, cable and antenna. And I have these waterproof connectors on here as well. These, these rubber gaskets or so, uh, rubber seals that go just around each wire. Yeah, so overall a nice box to use for um, for the terminations here. Would have been nice to have uh, already a pre-cut, uh, I guess a pre-cut hole for, for your conduit, but I guess they do have something here. That's if you have it coming in from the back, but you're kind of limited as to where you can mount it then. Alright, so back in the basement here, the first thing I had to do was to mount some grounding blocks for the for the cable lines that are coming in. So I have six incoming cable lines, which means I needed to have three double grounding blocks here. So there's one, two, and three. Um, now, the grounding blocks are meant more as a uh, like a surge arrestor just to prevent any electrical spikes from, from getting into your sensitive uh, TV equipment, satellite equipment, that kind of stuff. Um, so they are grounded. I just I individually grounded each one. I'm not sure if they all had to be individually grounded. I probably could have just fed them all through, um, daisy chaining them on the grounds. But I wasn't sure, so I just kept them all separate. They all go up into the same uh, into the same grounding block anyway to the top. So again, I really don't think it matters. But I did it just to be safe. 
Um, now, I mounted them on an angle because uh, of the way that I had to bring the wires in. Um, they're all going to come in from the top here and then down into here, from the top down into there. So if I mounted them straight, the wires would have to be all like twisted around and everything. So it's just, like, I'll show you in a second, it's a little bit easier to mount them on, a, on an angle there. Um, so the next thing I did also was um, I had these two uh, L channels or, or I guess angle irons. These are basically aluminum extrusions that uh, that I drilled some holes in and all these holes, this is where I'm going to have these little inline connectors where I'm going to attach the incoming lines to and uh, from there, I'll show you in a sec as well, but that's where I can attach my, my service lines into as well. Um, now I've offset the right one here, so you can see how I've just raised it up on these uh, risers. Um, and that's going to allow me to have kind of save some space um, with my mounting. Again, I'll show you that in a second. It's kind of hard to see right now, but uh, I'll get into that in a second. Um, yeah, so the second one here is raised, and this one's just mounted flat on the back there. Um, I also have some wires in the bottom, or some uh, almost like a like a power pack over there. <laughs> I'll show you that too later on. So there's that uh, that block of wood just rising it up. Uh, so this part here, these are the uh, I guess this is the e, this is a uh, amplifier and this is a splitter over here. I've mounted them on these little contraptions that I made here. Again, this is that uh, that angle iron, that that L-shaped angle iron, and this is a flat bar over here that I've actually bent around a two by four just to get that curve over there. Um, kind of looks a little bit neat, I guess. I'm not very good with metal work, so I wasn't able to do any fancy sheet metal bends or you know that kind of stuff. I don't even have a metal, a metal bender, so that's why I had to attach these two pieces together here. Um, and I mounted those two components onto here. Now the benefit of this is that it actually acts as like a heat sink as well too. So any heat that's generated by these uh, components will actually go into this metal, or sorry, the the aluminum channel here or aluminum bar, and help to dissipate it even more. So I took that to the uh, to the panel here and mounted it. Now I've done a lot of stuff here. I didn't really take progress pictures of the wiring and stuff here, but uh, let me show you kind of what I did here. So if you look, th this I mounted the uh, I mounted these two components over top of the grounding bar, over top of the grounding blocks there. Again, for space uh, conservation there. I didn't have too much space in the bottom, so I actually had to mount those components over top. Uh, I couldn't really mount them flush on the back there. That's why I raised them up on those on these uh, aluminum. Uh, channels here, or I guess aluminum uh, rods. The uh, the ground blocks, you can see how I brought the wires in from the back here, and they come down through there, and then back up into through here. So they come down, and they come in on an angle, and then back up. So mounting it on the 45, again, the 45 degree angle helps to facilitate the uh, the flow of the wires there. It's not, uh, not such a, a steep radius for the wires to bend as they come in. Uh, so again, yeah, this this part is it's pretty tight for space, but having the two layers there really helps to uh, to conserve the limited space that we have there. Um, let's see here. There's, there's the splitter down there. Um, next thing I did was I actually attached my wires into the uh, into the ports over here. Let me get a close up over there. So I have the wires coming down on the side here, and they all terminate into these blocks here. So every single room drop terminates into the into the the blocks over here, and then the incoming ports now are all over here. So the same labels that I have from outside carry through over here as well. So the the incoming service comes down all the way here, down, 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 and up over here, across here into the grounding blocks. Again, you can see the the colors over there, the red just showing through, the green over there, blue, and I guess there's the black and black and white over there. So they come through the grounding blocks, back around over here, and then in to these spots over here. So they take a little bit of a longer path, but now these these uh, incoming ports are all grounded and protected, and they can uh, they can have this serve any incoming any incoming signal over there. So once I have the signal coming in, it comes into the splitter, or, or sorry, it comes into the amplifier over here, and then down to the splitter. So from the splitter, I have uh, four. Uh, extra ports, or sorry, four extra uh, feeds that I can use, and I have them coming off into each room drop that I need to have it into. Um, and over, oh, sorry, and if you just take a look over here as well, you can see how stacking the, or I guess rising, raising up the uh, the right 
bar over here, distribution block, uh, allows me to save a little, bit, a little bit more space as well. So I can have um, the wires coming in over here on the right side and still have the wires coming on the left side and, and saving the space. Um, as opposed to mounting both of these flush on the uh, on the back wall there, and I'd have to have you know double the amount of space. So this whole entire block would be mounted up above here, and you know it'd be taking up twice the amount of space that I would actually need if I did it this way. Uh, so over here, this is my uh, power distribution center. I needed some kind of way to uh, again save space, but still have the uh, all the transformers plugged in at the bottom. So the way I did this was just by daisy chaining some plugs off of uh, off of the central plug over here. Uh, I was thinking about putting some kind of power bar on the bottom, but still, even that has the ex the excess cord and and the uh, the transformers don't always fit on there as well. So you can see I have I only have four transformers here, um, but all of those won't be able to fit on the power bar because you know the 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 transformer part takes up like you know two or three plugs in, in and of itself. Uh, never mind fitting on an extra an extra unit over here and there and there. So this is probably the best way, and I can kind of just you know arrange it however I want once once I have the plug there, and then I have the excess wires just uh, tucked away in the side in the gutter space there. So there's some more close-up shots there. The top part now I have all the uh, all the uh, the links set up. So from the room drops here, I've selected you know the the phone jacks that I need and the data jacks that I need as well and they're going into the room drops and you can just see some more close-up shots here I have uh, labels as well for every single port so I know exactly where that that port is going to so house number 12 is you know I'm not sure what it is but the kitchen kitchen dat, um, data port you know some more close-ups here And this is the top over here. I think I'm going to explain this in the very end, what this uh, portion is over here. have some test ports over here, again, labeled. And again, nicely uh, nicely arranged and organized over here. This is the uh, the new wire. If you remember from a few minutes ago, I was just pointing out how there was an, that, um, that phone wire coming in. So I've replaced it with a uh, three pair coming in. So I can have three telephone lines essentially coming in. I'm just using one of them for now. These two over here I'm not really using, but uh, I still have them there regardless. There's the uh, the DSL modem board. Or sorry, the DSL filter board for the modem. And the grounding block over here. And there's another close-up. This is of the uh, of the network switch. Close up of all the uh, cable ports coming in, the room drops. And of course, got to have a label over here. So if, let's see, number 12. See, number 12 is actually the family room. So there's a, a there's two there's two data jacks in the family room. Uh, that was number 12 that I was pointing out earlier there. But again, I have everything laid out here. So the ground block nicely labeled over here. So I know exactly what's coming into the uh, the ground block at, at, the, at a certain point. Um, I've also labeled that a punch down block over here um, and then I've labeled the uh, the data wires and the cable wires the, t the TV wires here it's just a couple more shots here so you can see here I'm kind of toying with the idea of you know do I put a flash in the cam or do I not these pictures over here are kind of dark without the flash so that kind of got me thinking well I could put some lights into the panel here uh, just to light everything up especially if you're working or rewiring things it's uh, a lot easier to put some lights inside of it. So you can see everything is nice and bright with the flash there. So I thought, okay, let me grab some LEDs and I'll put a light inside. So I have some LED strips over here. I put two strips on the top and uh, I put a switch on the side over here and that all hooks in. There's an extra transformer I have on the bottom now as well, but there's the main power coming in into the switch and then out into the, uh, the first strip over here. And then that basically comes so this is the first strip that, that has the power coming in. And then it comes into here and splits off into the second strip down there, or sorry, over, over there, and there's one more strip down here on the side too. So there's three strips in total. There, one, two, and three. And it casts a fair amount of light inside, so now everything's really visible inside, easy to see, easy to work, easy to read the label here as well. I should have done that in the very beginning when I was <laughs> when I was first working on the panel, but 
it was more of an afterthought. All right, so that's pretty much it for the picture slideshow, and uh, I'll, I'll finish up with the final videos.